All right. Good, good morning. If it's morning uh, to you here and then also on the recording. My name is Stephanie. Welcome to Bain Brain Training. Today, we're going to be doing um, a little bit more of an active class, taking several of the concepts and drills that we've explored in previous classes and seeing how they fold in and support um, a more sort of quote unquote active movement class, whether that be Pilates or a fitness class, a strength training class, fitness and strength training, resistance training, and Pilates are all wonderful elements for the nervous system and for your body in general. And so you want to make sure that you're continuing to do those, but then folding some of the information that we're learning in this class into those formats. If that makes sense. So today uh, you're going to need your letter ball or your ball that you're going to throw around in space to warm up your eyeballs. You are also going to need a pen or a pencil to help with some eye tracking. If you have a brain speed chart printed out, you'll want to have your brain speed chart printed out and pinned up on the wall somewhere. And then one last object that you'll need is some sort of foot release tool. So a tennis ball works great. A smaller ball works great. A can of soup works great. Um, a can of hairspray works great. Something that's round that you can roll on the bottom of your foot. All right. So while we gather all that, uh, that those tools and I had everything except my foot release ball. So I'm going to grab that in here. All right, so we are going to start with just a nice sensory warm up drill to integrate both our hands and our feet so that while we're doing our exercises, we have our hands and feet on board. I'm going to bring my camera down to the floor so you can see my feet. Uh, I don't really think you need to see my face for this part of it. So go ahead and stand on up if you are standing today. Otherwise, you can also do this on the floor. We're going to take our foot release ball and place it on the ground and just place your foot up on top of that ball. And the idea with this foot release is just to get the bones uh, to spread out on your foot a little bit more so that you have a bigger base to stand on. And then also to bring some blood flow and sensory awareness to the bottom of your foot so that when you're standing on your foot, you're just more aware of the ground underneath you. And so you're just going to take your ball or your can of soup or whatever you're using. I'm going to say ball from now on, and you're going to roll it from fully the base of the heel all the way to the forefoot and underneath the ball of the foot. And, um, quite frankly, the softer, the ball, the better. So the can of soup is probably a little bit aggressive. I do like the consistency of these pinky balls or a tennis ball is actually one of my favorite tools. You don't want something too, too hard uh, in a perfect world. You don't want something too hard because you want your body to fall in love with it and not feel abused by it. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to pass through both ends of the feet a few times and then take your release ball uh, to a point on that foot that you need just a little bit more support or a little bit more attention. So for example, this part of my foot feels a little bit more stiff or tender. And so I'm just going to press a little bit more weight into that area and then release, and then I'll press and release. And of course, if you need help with your balance, grab onto a chair, or hold onto the wall. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And then go ahead and step that foot onto the ground and just either with your eyes closed, or you can even look at your feet, take notice between how it feels in your body, the difference between the foot you just did and the foot that you have yet to do. And, um, hopefully you notice some sort of positive change, either in terms of sensation, being able to feel the ground, maybe the color looks different. Maybe even the shape of the foot looks uh, different, maybe a wider, a wider platform. And uh, if you did feel a positive change, then it's worth doing the other side. So go ahead and grab through the same process. So again, we'll just place the ball underneath your foot and then working that ball 
through the heel to the toe. Yep. So this foot integration or waking up your foot might be something that you would do right when you wake up in the morning to help your feet have better contact with the ground, especially if you're going to be walking around the house or going for a walk or working out. Good, a great good morning kind of activity first thing. And go ahead and find a spot that needs a little extra love on this side. For me, I needed more on the heel. Uh, so for you, it might be different, but I'm going to go for the heel this time. And you're just going to turn your foot as if you're putting out maybe a cigarette with the ball of your foot. And then the ball is underneath your heel. Great, cool. And then you can put that ball aside. We're not gonna use that quite uh, anymore. And then just go ahead and place your feet down on the ground and take notice of how now the side that you just did has brought itself up to standard here. All right, using a chair or a wall of some sort, go ahead and rock onto the floor if you need it for balance. Go ahead and rock onto the ball of the foot and then roll yourself back down onto the heel and see if you can lift your toes up. Okay. And again, make sure that either you have a couch behind, if you have a tendency to fall backwards, you just have a couch behind you or something of that sort. So we're just going to try to lift the toes, rock forward and lift the toes. Now, something to notice here for yourself, and especially at the beginning, again, this is a great check-in to know where your body's baseline is at the beginning of class, is when you lift your heels up, do you tend to, thank you, do you tend to roll to the outer edges of your ankle, or can you keep yourself into your big toe, okay? Go ahead and work through that a few times. Be mindful about being in your big toe, being in your midline, and then dropping back. Yep. And we'll do that a few more times. Just warming up your feet and ankles, maybe two more. And last one. Nice work, everyone. All right, real quick, last foot stretch. We're just going to take your foot back behind you. Again, use a chair or a wall if you need balance. My feet are weirdly flexible, so your might, yours might not look like that but you wanna to try to get the toenail down on the ground. And then we're just gonna roll the foot over to one side and back, okay? Yeah, and this may be, if this is new for you, maybe it's not super, super comfortable, but you're trying to just get your big toe, essentially you're trying to get your big toe to fold, okay? Yeah, and if you wanna make this more intense, you just bring the foot in closer and put a little bit more weight through it and, rocking right and left. Yep. And then just one last bit, go on your Barbie high heel. Guys may not know what I'm talking about, but Barbie high heel, and then we'll switch to the other side. So toenails down on the ground and we're rolling from right to left. So just to reiterate, I like to narrate as we're moving integrating the end points of our body. So our feet, hands, end points of the limbs ensures that we're gonna be having those participate in your movement. And then sort of as a byproduct of that, it makes sure that everything in between our belly button and through the end point to our toes is working as well. So if we have our feet involved in movement, then everything in between that is involved as well. Go ahead and do one high heel here and then relax those feet. Go ahead and just stomp around and bring some vibration through the bones. Throw a temper tantrum. If you don't have downstairs neighbors, I'm at my studio, so I don't have anyone below me. Good. That vibration is so good to wake up through the backs of the legs. And we're gonna go for four, three, two, and one. Nice job. 
All right, I'm gonna bring the camera back up here. So we just did our feet and now we're gonna do just a quick bit for our hands. If you have any rings on, I recommend removing those rings just briefly. So you have your hands really, really wide. Good, really, really wide. And we're just gonna take the webbing of your thumb and forefinger and smush them together. Yep. And then take peace sign and go through. And I'm gonna go through each finger or webbing, I guess webbing section <laughs> of your hand um, pretty quickly. If you have a section that needs a little bit more attention, you can double back at some points and then you're gonna do the middle. And the idea with this is to separate the fingers a little bit more so that when we go into a hands and knees position, we have a bigger base, a bigger base and uh, um, support through our hands. All right, where were we? Pinkies. Yeah. And, and then go ahead and flick your fingers. I want the thumbs to come across the top and then make them as big as you can. And you should hear a flicking. The flicking that you get, try to hear that flicking. You can put them next to your ears and make sure that flick is happening. If it's not happening, we need more thumb across the nails. There we go. Maybe a little quicker if you got it. Four, three, whoo, those hands getting tired. Two and one, rub your hands together, build some heat. Good, warming up those hands. Nice, give them a clap. I'm not gonna clap because that's annoying, but go ahead and keep clapping. And just like you did with the temper tantrum on your feet, try to get that vibration through the forearms all the way up through your shoulder. Good, so by now we should have some integration in our hands and our feet. Let's bring our eyes into the picture as well. Grab your letter ball. And we're gonna play a little bit of catch with yourself. So letter ball, we're gonna play the letter ball game. If you know the letter ball game, go ahead and do it. You can just ignore me or refresh your memory on what the letter ball game is if you need that tutorial. So the letter ball game is you just uh, throw the ball and catch it to yourself. Try to track the ball as it's moving through space and as it lands through into your hands. And the more wild you can throw that ball to yourself, the better so that it gets your eyeballs to move around in a lot of different places. So, you know, throw your, throw it to the ball to the side. So it pulls your eyes to the side. You can bounce it. You can throw it off of a wall. Let's make sure I'm using a wall that no one is behind. Yep. That makes it a little bit more chaotic so that we're not quite sure. Okay. Where's that ball going to actually go? If you have letters or numbers on that ball, say them out loud as you catch the ball so that you're getting both hand eye coordination, eye tracking and voice. Ooh. Good. If you want to make it harder, you're going to close your eyes and open your eyes just before you feel like the ball is going to come into your hand. It'll give you this little like spontaneous effect as if someone's chucking a ball at you. Good, and we're gonna do that for about 30 more seconds. This is the only time we're playing letter ball today. Let me see how we're doing here. Yeah, warming up those eyes, get, get wild everyone, get wild. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, Walter's going crazy with the hands. I love it. Let's see if we can make that an eye exercise, Walter. So bring your eyes to the ball as you bring it around. There you go. All right, two or three more there. Nice. And then go ahead and pause. All right, we're gonna come onto the ground for a little bit of movement on the floor. So go ahead and make your way down. If you have your release ball nearby or a small ball that you can hold or an object that you can hold in one hand, even better. Okay. 
Good. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, the theme for class today is going through some movement or exercises that you might find in a Pilates class or a you know fitness class or a weight training class. And how can we integrate some of the neurological brain training drills that we've been working on? How can we integrate that into these other type of formats to make sort of a full comprehensive experience in just one format? So we're going to take that ball in your top hand and reach it all the way forward. Reach it all the way forward until the shirt comes down to the ground. Good. And we're going to keep your eyes on that ball. As the ball lifts up overhead and spirals behind us, maybe your shoulder comes down to the ground, maybe not. Keep your eyes on that ball as it comes around towards your hips and then back forward in front of you, all right? This bottom arm is supporting your head. So if you need to lift up your head a little bit in order to make that tracking possible, then we'll do that. So for example, as the ball comes sort of down by the hip, I have to lift my head up a little bit. If you need that support, use your hand to help you and then bring it back in. All right. So we're going to do about three or four more of these. And so if you're ever doing any sort of class or your PT assigns this exercise or something of that sort, and maybe, you know, you're doing it for one reason or another, your PT assigned it for you for one reason or another, but you know, you're like, Hey, I can make this a little bit more for myself by adding in this eye tracking component along with the spine twist. And therefore I'm integrating my visual center and getting the movement that my PT wanted me to get. Okay. That's kind of the theme for today. How can we pull these two worlds together? All righty. Good, good. And let's go ahead and do the other side. If you want to just roll your legs over the other side, you can. I'm going to swing around so I can still stay facing you. And so we're going to go with that same concept, tracking that ball as it's moving around in space. So here we're going to go ball reaching up and around. Oh, this always feels so good. Spine twists are never a bad idea. Well, maybe there's some contraindications, but for most of us. Good. Keeping your eyes locked on that ball, you're getting a great visual tracking experience here you're tracking the ball with your eyes you're also getting some nice head movement so we're getting that vestibular effect and you're lying down on your side which is interesting for your brain in general because we're usually upright right so just changing our orientation to the world is interesting for our brain and on our side the lights are out and we're sleeping so Good, and we're gonna go like two more. Great, last one. Perfect. All right, go ahead and bring your ball, just drop off your ball to the side. And then come into an all fours position or hands and knees position. And because we warm up our hands earlier, we should have a really nice big base through our hands. It should feel pretty good. All right. Right here, we're just going to go with some rocking. Uh, if you have the ability to tuck your toes underneath, we did this a little bit in our foot warm up too. Hey, look at that. It's all coming back. We're just going to rock the hips back to come over your heels and then rock the uh, body forward over your wrists. All right gonna tuck in my shirt so we're gonna rock forward and back rock forward and back nice getting a stretch on your wrists as you come forward and then maybe a stretch on your feet as you sit back let's do this take your eyes to the front part of your mat maybe just in front of you and keep your eyes on that object as you're moving forward and back and so your eyes 
are shifting in the frame. They're maybe coming to the top of your eyeball socket and then maybe coming to the center and then to the top of your eyeball socket and to the center. And so for most of us, we're looking for nice upright posture. And so bringing your eyeballs upright is going to help with that extension. Last one right here, and then we're gonna shake out those wrists. <laughs> yep, good. And then go ahead and sit back. Nice. Child's pose for a moment here. Untuck your toes, let your knees go wide so that your belly can drop in. And then let your forehead come down to the mat. And take a couple moments to find your posterior rib breath. So what that means is letting your spine and ribs expand out your backside to let your air fill the ribs from behind. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago in our class on breath. Maybe one more breath. Perfect. Go ahead and bring yourself into a hands and knees position here. We're going to take your right foot to towards your right pinky. All right. So super suave way would be to lift the leg through, but I know for some of us, we may need to take a couple moments to pull that leg forward, right? Go ahead and find that spot as best as you can here. Now, if this is feeling a little too tight, this position's hard to do with your hands on the ground. You're going to grab a chair and have your hands on the front side of a chair. Okay. If you can put your hands on the ground, stay right here. You're doing great. We're going to do that rocking sensation here, but this time it's a little bit on the diagonal. So we're going to rock onto the diagonal and then push back and rock back. And you're going to get that hamstring stretch, rock forward and rock back. Good. <sighs> Nice. And so we're going to take our eyes to the right. Let's see if you have your right foot. I know I'm opposite because of the camera. If you have your right foot forward, you're going to take your eyes to the right side of your face and still do that rocking. So maybe pick something that's just in front of your toe. Your, your face is still facing forward over your hands, but you're going to pick a point that's a little bit to the right of your hand. Good. And we're going to go two more here. And last one. Good. Bring that foot back. If it's worth doing the other side, we'll go ahead and do that. Bring your left foot forward to the left pinky. Nice. Work that hip mobility. Again, if this feels like a too, little too much, let's grab a chair and hold on to a chair. Start rocking forward and rocking back. And pick a point that's just over your left foot or your left hand to look at as you're rocking forward and back. So now we're getting sort of this left side of our face up and down. Yeah. Nice. Good, we'll do two more here. There you go. And last one. Perfect. And then bring that foot back underneath you. If you need to shake out your wrist, shake out your wrist real quick. We're going to come into quadruped. Let's see, is this the last time we'll do it? Yeah, I think this is the last time we'll be in quadruped on your hands, actually. Go ahead and tuck your toes. And so I'm going to, I'm going to show you, um, kind of a progression of exercises. So I'm going to start simple and add on, and you can continue adding on for yourself as far as you'd like to go. If we get to a point where it seems a little bit too challenging to stay right with that previous point. Okay. So right here, we're going to tuck those toes underneath us, shift forward into your wrists and see if you can hover your knees just a little bit and then drop the knees back down and sit back. So shift forward into the wrist and hover your knees and then drop the knees and shift back. I'm gonna show that just a few more times and then I'm gonna add on. So if this is hard enough for you, if you're like, whoo, there's a lot of upper body work, a lot of core work, a lot of quad, a lot of foot, then you're gonna stay right here. If you're feeling good about that, we're gonna go ahead and hover those knees and then we're gonna push back into an A-frame 
some call this a down dog, but I can't get my heels down. So I try not to call it a down dog. And then we shift forward, bring your knees down and rest. All right, so we hover the knees first, shift back into an A-frame or down dog, and then shift forward into the knee hover and then drop down. So remember you have the option of just having your knees up and down, or you can do your A-frame. Wow, nice work, everyone. What I like about this is going upside down. Again, changing the perspective on the world. So you're gonna go upside down, maybe look in between your ankles, push through your shoulders, and then bring the knees back down. We're gonna do this four more times. Turn your world upside down. Kids do this all the time. Isn't that so funny? They do this all the time, no problem. <sighs> Turn the world upside down. Good. One more time. Turn the world upside down. You got your shoulders nice and warmed up, toasty. Good, good. And bring it in. Woo. Shake it out. Nice job. All right. A long, long time ago, we talked about eye convergence and midline connection. Eye convergence, remember, is that when an object comes towards you in space, this is a bigger object that you can see, your eyeballs are able to move towards the center of your face in order to stay focused on the object. If your eyeball doesn't converge inward or move accommodate inward, you're essentially going to have a little bit of double vision. You're going to see two images and that's confusing for your brain and tiresome. So training convergence helps us both uh, track objects through space, read better without getting too tired, um, see things that are flying towards us. Um, I also find that convergence helps us with midline connection and core connection. So anytime you're about to do any sort of core exercises, say a Pilates class or core exercises, again, that your PT gave you, doing a quick convergence drill with your eyes will help you draw a deeper into those exercises. So we're going to do that right here. Convergence. Um, I'm going to come closer to the camera. So you can use uh, a pen or you can actually just use the tip of your finger as well. And you're going to hold that pen or pencil uh, a couple feet from your face, sitting up nice and tall. We just bring the pen or pencil towards your nose, going slow enough that it allows your eyes to accommodate inwards, to pull inward. Stay at the closest moment for a second or two to really draw your attention there and then drift your pen back to the start point. Okay. These are called pencil push-ups. Make sure that you're nice and tall through your posture in this one. You don't want to be slumped over or having your chin dropped. All right. So if it helps to just do this standing, do it standing. Uh, if you have better posture and you're standing. So we're going to do 10 to 12 pencil push-ups drawing the eyeballs inward and then out. Again, take a few moments on that in position to really make sure you hit your end range. Maybe you focus in and then you pull a little closer and you go, oh yeah, I can go closer than that. And we'll do maybe like one or two more. Nice. Excellent. All right. Go ahead and grab uh, your ball or an object here that you are going to be able to squeeze in between your thighs something that you can squeeze in between your thighs. A pillow works great also. And if you're not already on the floor, go ahead and roll yourself back. Oh, good thing that was soft. So we're gonna take your object and we're gonna pull it or place it right in between your knees. This right in between your knees and then arms down by your side. So hopefully at this point you can, I can give you adequate audio verbal instructions so you don't have to keep looking at the screen because I want you pretty much again um, facing the ceiling all right so we have the ball in between the knees and you're squeezing that ball just a little bit and then 
Go ahead and tap your feet on the ground a little bit so that you become aware of your feet because we're going to be using those feet in your bridging exercise. And make sure that your big toe is really, really involved. Invite those big toes to the party. All right, palms facing up, collarbones really wide. Let's press our hips up towards the ceiling. Still having this nice active squeeze in your ball. And then your big toe working to stay involved in the party here, okay? So big toe and inner thigh squeeze equals core connection, by the way. And then go ahead and bring it back down. So we're just gonna tap the tail down to the mat and then press the hips back up. Tap the tail down and then press your hips back up. Tap and press. Nice job. Good, collarbones wide here. Nicely done. Drop down and drive up. Perfect, we're gonna do about four more here. And three more, two, and last one. Beautiful, bring your hips down and go ahead and pass your ball into your hands. And let's keep that ball up towards the ceiling. All righty. We're gonna take that ball up overhead try to track that ball as long as you can. At some point, that ball is probably gonna disappear over your eyebrows as the ball comes down towards the floor and your uh, arms come down towards your ears. So your biceps come towards your ears. And then go ahead and bring that ball back up towards the ceiling. So we're gonna go ahead and trace that ball as the arms come up overhead and then bring it back to the ceiling. All right, so this exercise is called rib cage, rib cage arms. Sometimes it's called a lat pullover. Maybe you do this for some shoulder stretches on the floor. With this one, we wanna be mindful that we're keeping our abdominals engaged here. So we're not letting the ribs expand and lift off of the ground as the arms come up. So before you bring the ball up overhead, I want you to drop your ribs heavy. So your back is down on the floor. Ladies, if you have a bra strap on, sometimes it's nice to press your bra strap down into the ground. It's a great way to think about it. And then maintaining that front connection here, still bringing those arms up overhead and then pull your arms back overhead. All right. So as the arms reach with straight elbows, super, super straight elbows, we're keeping the ribs heavy on the ground. Now, if you want to up level this a little bit, you can use weight. You can hold on to a dumbbell that would make this a little bit more of a core and upper body exercise as well. We're gonna go two more. Yep, and last one. Perfect, and release down. Nice. We're gonna place that ball in between the knees again. And we're gonna do another bridging exercise with your palms facing up, shoulders open. Press your hips up towards the ceiling and hold here for a second. Bring your right arm up overhead. So slide like you're making a snow angel. Right arm up overhead and drop your right hip down towards the ground. And then press your right hip back up towards the ceiling and bring your right arm down towards the side again. So we go left arm up, left hip drops. Press the left hip up and bring your hand back down to the side. Right arm comes up right hip drops and then back up towards the ceiling and release. If you have that down, so same side arm comes up, same side hip drops. If you have that pretty good, we're gonna turn our head to the opposite direction that your arm is up. Oh my gosh, so many things going on now. So we have arm up, hip drops, and eyes and head go to the opposite side. Can you do it a little bit more coordinated? Maybe three more, depending on how quick you're going. Two more. Last one. Good. And release. 
Everything comes down. Excellent job. Pass that ball in towards your hands. All right, we're gonna do that same rib cage arms exercise as we did last time. Couple options. If you have a dumbbell nearby, grab your dumbbell and up level this challenge a little bit. Another way that we can up level this challenge if you wanna do this way or you can do both is we're gonna bring the legs into the tabletop. Make sure that your feet are flexed. All right, so tabletop legs, weight or ball is up towards the ceiling. Nestle those ribs down to make sure that they're heavy and your abs are engaged. And then we're gonna follow that ball up towards the ceiling or up overhead and then pull back, maybe even touch your knees. Reach the ball out and then pull back. Good. As you're working through this, keep your breath flowing. Maybe inhale out, exhale, pull back in. And exhale. A lot of PTs and Pilates teachers might use the exercise, the dead bug exercise, dead bug. So again, before you do your dead bug or core exercises, do a little convergence with your eyes to support the nervous system in the movement. Right? So you're integrating the nervous system into the, the muscle, kind of muscle training. Last two. And last one. Nice job. Go ahead and bring your feet down. Roll off to the side. How are we doing? We're going to come up to a stand and do a little bit more work on our feet. So some of those exercises might be something more that a PT would give you, or you'd find in a Pilates class. This next little bit is going to maybe be something you'd find more in a fitness class, okay, or an aerobics class. Alrighty. We're going to take that small ball or small object that you can hold in one hand, and we're going to grab that in your left hand. Your feet are going to be really wide or wider than your hips. All right. And right here, we're going to take, so the ball is in your left hand. I like to put my other hand behind my back. We're going to take that ball and reach it down towards the floor. Now, if the floor seems really far away, um, maybe put some pillows to give you a different target. As you bring your hip, your hand down to the floor, I want you to keep your eyes forward. Okay. And then bring your, uh, bring yourself back up to stand. And we're going to punch. I know my hand's going to come out of the frame. We're going to punch up towards the ceiling. Your eyes are going to stay locked on something in front of you. So you're going to drop down and then stand up, drop down and stand up. And of course, the faster you go, the more metabolic it becomes but make sure that you're paying attention to that dizzy factor. If you lose your eyes in front of you, you might get a little dizzy. So keep your eyes locked on that object in front of you. Good, and we're gonna do four more, three more, two, last one. Nice job. Switch to the other side, okay? So you make it your own thing if you wanna pump up the pace. Here we go. Eyes are in front of you for that vestibular effect. Here we go. Punch, touch, punch, touch, punch, touch, punch. Beautiful. Getting that hip press all the way vertical standing. Nice job, everyone. We're going to go for four, three, two, and last one. Good. Nice job. Place your ball just off to the side for right now. This next exercise, we're gonna be walking on our tiptoes. And if you maybe need a balance, maybe find a wall that you can sort of walk down, okay? So we're gonna come up onto the balls of your feet and just walking on your tiptoes. Go ahead and walk around your room. We call it furniture walking if you need to grab onto something, but for the most part, standing up onto your tiptoes and pretty much staying there to work on calf strength. But as I mentioned in the past, big toe connection equals core connection. If we can understand that relationship, every time you're on your big toe, you're working your core. Yep, if your room is a square and you're walking in one particular direction, just notice which direction because the second time around, we're gonna switch the direction. So just know which direction you're walking. Let's do maybe one more lap. 
my studio is not very big. Good. And then go ahead and grab your object again. If you wanted to load this a little bit more for your muscle muscular system, you could grab a dumbbell instead of holding your ball. Okay, so if you wanna grab a three or five or, or a dog, you could grab your dog too, but I don't know how much you wanna throw your dog. <laughs> dog. People on the recording are gonna be like, what is she talking about? Carrie had a dog. All right, All right. so we're gonna go hand behind the back, object in the hand here. Go ahead and tap down and reach up. Again, if you've decided to use a dumbbell, you'll feel a little bit of a difference. If you are using weight, make sure that that weight stays close to your body. In the fitness world, we say it's, it's almost like you're ripping off your shirt, but don't actually do that, please. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you want to make this just a little bit more of a challenge, you're going to look over to the left the whole time. Look over to the left, just with your eyeballs, your face is forward. Just look over to the left the whole time. That's going to help you bias your left arm. So if you have trouble with one arm versus the other, Taking your eyes to that side is going to help your body recognize that arm and make it work just a little bit better on a nervous system level. We're going to go for three, two, if you're on my tempo, and one. I get excited about this stuff, so I start going quicker. Let's switch sides. If you're having trouble just getting the movement itself, just look forward. If you want to go over to the right arm, go to the right arm. Here we go. Eyes to the right if you want to add that little eyeball challenge. It's gonna help you pull up with that right arm. Keep it close to your body. Good, quicker is gonna be more metabolic. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Get your bearings, catch your breath. Ooh, that one hit my eyeballs, the sideways one. All right, we're gonna go the other direction around the room on your tiptoes. Go ahead, start furniture walking, maybe use the wall to support you. If you're not walking, you're just gonna be doing tiptoe marching in place. All right. And remember when you're walking, we talked about this at the beginning, trying to have the big toe connection. So if you notice that you're sort of walking on the outside of your foot, Try to draw it a little bit more inward, squeeze the inner thighs together so you can stay more on the big toe side. Yep. Nice, maybe one more lap. Which way did they go? How are we doing? Good? Nice. All righty, how are we doing here, yeah? Give me a thumbs up. Not so good, good, awesome, cool. All right, you're gonna need your brain speed posters for this next series. So if you have this printed out, pin it up on your wall and you're gonna use that. If you don't have this, no worries. I'm gonna do it in an auditory format, okay? So here's how it's gonna go. If you have this poster on your wall, you're gonna mute me so that I don't distract you and then after the minute, I'm going to be like, okay, it's a minute. And then you're going to look back towards me. Okay. Otherwise this is going to get distracting if you're hearing me and trying to work through it on your own pace. So the idea here, if you're looking at the poster, you're going to have dots that are in the center in this side of the line. I don't know what it is. And on that side of the line. So if it's in the center, or if I yell center to you, I want you to just do an arms up. Okay, if you wanna go up onto the balls of the feet even better, and if you wanna jump even better, okay? If the dot is, I think this is on your right side. <laughs> is that your right side? Okay, okay, if this is on your right side, we're gonna go out to the side with the foot and then bring it back to the center. If you wanna make it more metabolic, it's gonna be a full lunge. If you wanna hold weights through this whole thing, it would be a side lunge with weights, okay? And then the same thing when the dot is to the other side on the left, it's gonna be a side step out or a side lunge or whatever, a side lunge with weights, okay? So center is something through the center, 
over to the right or over to the left. If you have your poster, go ahead and mute me because it's just gonna get real confusing. I'm gonna go through this in a set period. We're gonna do it for a minute. So if you wanna time yourself for a minute, you can do that as well. Um, otherwise look at, you know, look at me if I'm like doing other things, then <laughs> it's time to move on. All right. So if you're doing the auditory version, I'm gonna say it out loud. Here we go. Center, right, right, center. And if you're seated, it could just be your arms too. Left, right, left, right. Uh huh. Center, left, center, <laughs> right, right, Woo! center, right, left, center, left, left, right, center, center left, right, center, right, right, center, left, right, left, right, center, left, center, right. Nice job. Did everyone just follow the auditory? No one did their own thing? Okay, I'll do make sure, I'll note that for next time. Nice job, walk around the room and just give yourself like a little cool down, kind of like, whoa, what just happened? Bring it back over here when you're ready. Good. And sort of keeping on the theme of keeping this moving and working through our core and keeping our center line here. We're gonna do an imaginary jump rope or an imaginary uh, skipping rope here. So if um, you are not jumping, then you're just gonna be doing heel raises very quick with this winding of your arms. And if you wanna do an imaginary jump rope, you'll just actually get some airtime. If you actually have a jump rope, go ahead and use the jump rope. And if you're just sitting in the chair, I want you to march, okay? If you're just sitting in the chair, just march with your knees. We're gonna imaginary jump rope for 30 seconds. Are you ready, set, go. Keep your eyes on something. Centered, squeeze your thighs together, stay on those big toes. Yes. Good. And that jump rope arm is very small. It's little wrist flicks. It's little wrist flicks. You're squeezing your armpits in and you're flicking the wrist. Yep. That's it. Awesome. Woo. Some of you guys getting creative with the single leg hops. Yep. And we're going to go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Good, good. All right, bring it back. We're gonna do one more round of both of those things. Settle your heart rate real quick. We're gonna do the brain speed chart one more time. I'm gonna read it out loud for y'all. And uh, the movements are exactly the same. So if you're doing the standing versions with weights, there's all those options. If you're just seated in the chair, just do the arms, okay? Are we ready? Here we go. Left, right, center, center, left, right, right, center, right. I'm going fast this time. Left, center, left, left, center, right, center, left, right, left, right, center, left, left, center, left, almost there, right, center, center, left, right, right, 
I'm like your GPS. Center, right, <laughs> left, center, left. Nice work, everyone. Great job. Take a moment. We're going to do your imaginary jump rope again. I loved one of the options that one of the audience was doing, so I'm going to share it with everyone. So you're either doing just kind of a bounce here. You can add some air. You can do single leg. You can do single leg skips, and then you can do single leg. So lots of options. You can mix and go. I just want you moving for 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Start moving. <laughs> Whichever version. That's it, Walter. Nice job. David looking good. Just getting some bounce and quick movement. I want quick, 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 quick movement. <laughs> Stay with me. Getting a little aerobic in. You got 15 seconds. Good, staying on the balls of your feet, big toes. Five, four, three, two, one. Whew. Walk around the room. Nice work. All righty. Since we did so much work through our feet today and our calves, we're just gonna stretch our calves as sort of a cool down. I'm gonna, actually, no, I can just do this standing. I'm just gonna show you kind of the lower half because that makes the most sense. So you're gonna stride yourself out here. If you need to hold something to balance, apparently maybe I do. <laughs> make sure that your feet are forward. So make sure this back foot hasn't turned out. Make sure that your feet are truly forward. And we're just gonna lift up through your back heel and then lower your back heel. And if you have a different way that you wanna stretch your calves, go for it. This is just a quick and easy way to do it without any props or drama with, you know, a ledge, finding a step and all that. Good. And it's dynamic. It's great for your big toes. We'll do about two more. Good, go ahead and switch sides. And we're gonna lift and lower, lift and lower. Nice. Last two. And last one. Nice work. All right, go ahead and find your center again, wherever your station is. Just a nice spot to bring yourself back to home base. Go ahead and close your eyes if that feels right for you and let your arms hang by your side. I'm just going to play back the class a little bit for just a review to consolidate all that information. Hopefully you can walk away from here with, with some, something to take with you. So the theme for today was how to integrate neuro drills or, or some of the neuro concepts that we've learned in the, you know, over the summer and pulling those into different class formats like Pilates or your PT exercises or fitness classes. And a few of those ways were making sure that you're preparing your body. So we did some great preps with our feet and our hands so that when we're doing our movements, Everything from our hands to our feet, through our, through our eyes, everything is going to be involved in that movement. And we don't have to worry about, you know, having some part of our body left out. We also warmed up our visual center with letter ball. We warmed up our vestibular system with some movement laying on your side and turning upside down in the A-frame or the down dog. We warmed up our core or prepared our core with convergence. So bringing your eyes to the middle of the face and thinking about how we can be on the balls of your feet and squeezing your inner thighs to help you draw more into your, it's called your center line or your midline. So we do that with the eyes and we also do that with the body. We did a little bit of work of looking at our eyes, flicking our eyes to the side during single-sided movements, like that single arm floor touch to overhead press. We were looking to that one side to help us draw deeper into that side of your body. So if you have a side of your body that's more affected than the other, then maybe taking your eyes to that side of the body during that movement is gonna help you. And then making some of our 
fitness e type movements, um, more of the reactionary based kind of flow. So we did brain speed where, um, it was less sort of planned out and meditated in terms of alternating each side. It was less predictable. So that spontaneity, it helps our brain always be paying attention and then reacting to our environment. And so using the brain speed posters is a great way to mix up your fitness exercises, um, in terms of, um, keeping it fresh and, and kind of interesting for your, for your brain. Take a moment to breathe in a few times and reflect back on everything that I just mentioned or that you experienced and maybe pick one thing that you're excited to integrate um, into your classes or into your daily routine. Take a deep breath in, reach up with your arms, big stretch, and then release out. Excellent job, everyone. I'm gonna turn off the rec uh, recording and um,